Sir Richard Branson, the multi-billionaire known for his publicity stunts and for helping to form the Virgin Group. How exactly did Richard Branson get rich? We'll answer that question in today's episode. My name is Dan Henry, and when I was 16 years old, I decided that I wanted to be rich. So I studied as many wealthy entrepreneurs as I could and used what I learned to create my own successful business. The purpose of this channel is to share my research with the world and show you how they got rich. Eccentric billionaire Richard Branson isn't afraid to dip his fingers into any industry he feels he can profit from. Among the more than 60 companies in his portfolio, his private island, and his many luxury estates, Richard Branson has amassed a net worth of more than $4.3 billion. He wasn't always so successful, though. Richard Branson dropped out of school when he was 16. As someone who struggled with dyslexia, he says that he was often referred to as the dumbest person at school. How did Branson go from a high school dropout to a self-made billionaire by the age of just 41? From 16 years old with no job prospects to the owner of some of the most successful businesses in the world, how did Richard Branson get rich? Branson was born in Surrey, England on July 18, 1950, and even from a young age, it was obvious that he had the spirit of an entrepreneur. But his undiagnosed dyslexia made school an endless challenge for him, despite being very smart. He almost flunked out of the all-boys school that he attended until the age of 13. He knew he could do better than they ever thought he could, so at the age of 16, Branson decided to drop out of high school and start his own business. He felt like the popular magazines he'd seen passed between schools were dull and uninspiring, so he set out on a mission to do something unique and innovative instead. He came up with the idea for Student Magazine, a youth culture magazine that wasn't afraid to share views that were considered radical at the time. He worked to bring forth a new kind of magazine, one with a postmodernist attitude. Branson brought his alternative mindset to music, the Vietnam War, and other things he was passionate about at the time. The magazine was run out of the basement of his co-founder's parents' house. Despite having no money to put into the business, Branson worked on it day in and day out. As luck would have it, his mother stumbled across a nice necklace on the ground near their home, and she quickly gave it to the police. But after months of no one stepping up to claim it, the police wound up returning it to her. His mother sold the necklace for 100 euros, or what would now be worth around $2,000, and offered the money to Branson to help get his business off the ground. He and his partner used the money to pay off their magazine's postage and electricity bills. Branson said, without it, the business would have collapsed. In 1966, Student Magazine made its official debut. In their first month alone, they sold $8,000 worth of advertising. Branson distributed the first 50,000 copies they printed for free, the costs of which he managed to cover through the successful advertising. Needing a way to continue to support his magazine, Branson started looking for more ways he could revolutionize the world around him. Being the artistic high school dropout that he was, had Branson wound up getting involved with the hippie music and drug scene of the late 1960s? The youth of the 60s didn't have the benefit of the internet, so they relied on magazines to learn about new music from around the world. As he got more involved in the music scene, Branson realized how difficult it was to get a hold of certain records, especially in small towns. So in 1970, he established the Virgin Group and a mail-order record company. This was a completely new and revolutionary idea, since the only way to get a record at that time was to hope your local shop had it. This allowed people to order specific records and have them mailed to their house. As he met more and more small artists through his magazine and mail order company, he saw what a challenge it was for them to get signed on a record deal. He wanted to help his friends record their music, so in 1972, he decided to start his own record label called Virgin Records. The first single recorded by Virgin Records was Tubular Bells by Mike Oldfield, and it was an instant hit. The song was on the top of the UK charts for 247 weeks straight. Thanks to this massive success, Virgin Records quickly became the hottest record label on the scene. Everyone wanted to sign with them. Branson's label signed with the Rolling Stones, Genesis, and the Sex Pistols. Signing with the Sex Pistols was a bold move, since at the time, they were considered to be a very controversial group. But Branson knew what he was doing, and even today, the Sex Pistols are still famous around the world. Never one to work on just one business at a time, in 1984, Branson started his own airline, Virgin Atlantic. He was inspired to do so because of a flight cancellation earlier that year. Branson, who has always loved to travel, was on his way from Puerto Rico to the Virgin Islands when his flight was delayed. 
He had a date waiting for him, so he didn't want to be late. Rather than wait for the next available flight, he was able to charter a plane, and he even offered for other passengers to come with him for $39 each. After this experience, Branson jumped headfirst into building his airline. He was doing very well, too, until British Airways started trying to poach Branson's customers. Branson said that they had people going to our clubs and going through the rubbish bins outside our clubs and looking for needles so they could leak stories to the scurrilous press about drugs in the clubs and so on. Furious, Branson took British Airways to court, demanding justice for their behavior. He won the case, but at a heavy cost. Branson had underestimated how expensive litigation was. We realized then that we needed the firepower to deal with British Airways, says Branson, and that in order to keep all the jobs protected at Virgin Records and the airline, I needed to sell something. Although Virgin Records had grown more successful every year, it soon became one of the top six record labels in the world. Branson needed a way to keep his companies afloat. So in 1992, Branson sold Virgin Records for $1 billion. Despite earning his first ever billion off of this deal, Branson was devastated at the loss of his precious company. When speaking about the sale, he said, I literally, I did have tears streaming down my face. He even broke down crying in the street when he saw a sign that was talking about his big sale. His love for his company and his employees was revealed to the world in that moment. I hate selling things, Branson says, because basically a company is a group of people. He didn't let his disappointment stop him though. Ever adventurous, Richard is now the owner of tens of Virgin companies, some of which are working on a new cruise line and even space tourism. Today, Branson dedicates most of his time to philanthropy. He spends his time working with Virgin Unite, the charitable branch of his Virgin group. Branson has also signed the Giving Pledge, promising to give away more than half his wealth in his lifetime. Even though he struggled in school and was constantly being made fun of by his peers, he didn't let that stop him. It motivated him to prove people wrong, to do something extraordinary, and to do something fun. He dropped out of high school and started his first business as a teenager, and through that, he built an empire that spans the globe. His passion and open heart have led him to all of his greatest successes and gotten him through all of his most difficult struggles. As Richard Branson once said, there is no greater thing you can do with your life and your work than follow your passions. In a way, that serves the world and you.